Hello, happy Booker announcement day, or I guess uh, day after Booker announcement day for when this goes up. Very exciting times. I am here with a quick video to talk about the two books that I have already read for Booker 2022. Hi, my name is Sarah Freshly and welcome back to Freshly Read Books. So to just jump into this, basically I have read two of the books already for Booker. I also happen to be filming a reading vlog for them, but that just kind of fell apart. So I still have the clips. They seem a little out of place. So apologies for that. Basically, I just pulled all the clips of me actually talking about these two books in the video and I threw out everything else. But before that, some updates about Booker in general. As many of you know by now, I am going on a trip in two days three days, two days when this video goes up, I will be leaving for Indonesia and I will be in Indonesia and Thailand for the better part of August. So I'm not exactly going to be able to film and edit reviews while I'm there. I'm hoping to be able to just film reviews while I'm there, but I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna shake out. So I'm gonna try to stay on top of the actual reading schedule and will hopefully be filming those reviews while I'm there and just saving those up to edit them when I get back. I'll still have videos going up on my channel. They just won't be Booker related because I've already filmed them. And obviously the long list just got announced today as I'm filming this. So there's that, but still feel free to follow me on Instagram because I will be posting updates regularly about my travels. And then also I typically do an overview of all of the long listed books for Booker. And while I do that, I create the background for my videos that I'll be using for that entire Booker award. Award. So every video that I make related to it will have that background and it includes uh, 12 of the 13 books just because that is what works better. Now because of this trip and me making sure that everything is ready to go and I am good to leave, I am not going to have a chance to create that before I go. I do plan on making it once I get back. And since at that point, it won't really be worth it to give an overview of the books because you'll probably very much know them by then. I was thinking that maybe I could do a live stream while I create the background and then we could just chat Booker in general and our thoughts. It'll be coming up pretty close to the shortlist, maybe like two weeks out from the shortlist. So maybe talk about our thoughts with that, but just wanted to see if that is something that you all would be interested in watching. So let me know please in the comments what you think of that. Now for this video, I am basically going to hand it over to my past self talking my way through reading these two books, those being Booth by Karen Joy Fowler and also The Colony by Audrey McGee. I didn't finish talking about The Colony because as I said, the video fell apart, but I will finish talking about it here so you'll watch that and you'll come back here and I'll finish my thoughts on The Colony and I guess on Booth as well, just like kind of do a nice little wrap up. So I will see you in a second. Again, sorry for some very out of context clips. I think I mostly cut them so that it's not so weird, but it's still a little weird. I am currently reading Booth by Karen Joy Fowler. So this book I don't really think is going to be on the Booker long list. Like I just don't really see it based off of what it's about and reading through it, but it's possible. And Karen Joy Fowler has been shortlisted in the past, which is why I'm considering it as a Booker eligible. But if you see my prediction video with Kieran, then you know that this wasn't even on my list, but this was sent to me by Putnam Publishing. I really wanted to read it. So I'm reading it anyways, mostly now because I feel like if I wait till after Booker, then my excitement will die down even more for it. So I'm nearing like the halfway point, I would say in this book. And so far I'm liking it. I don't know, I'm kind of on the fence about it. If you don't know, this is about the Booth family. So that's John Wilkes Booth's family. John Wilkes Booth is of course the man that assassinated Abraham Lincoln. And so this story is about his family. So his father, and he was an actor, but his father was a very famous actor and he had many siblings. And so you kind of get like the perspectives of his siblings, but so far we haven't gotten like any of his perspective. And I don't think we're going to. I think this is really just like all about the family itself and it seeming to be such a normal family, despite the fact that later on, one of the youngest members, and actually he might be the youngest, I think he is the youngest child, he's going to go on to assassinate the president. Also just like like hearing uh, their thoughts and everything, their feelings about slavery uh, at the time and how against it their father is, but then there are like some things that 
I would still say are morally wrong that he's okay with and like it's weird lines that like slavery is to them. So there's a lot of like conversation about that and I think that it is kind of interesting to hear a story from the perspective of people that I would say are technically on the right side of history in their general ideas but then they're still so wrong about so many other things even in that same topic if that makes sense so like yes they think that these people should be free but maybe they think that the way to get there is to have like a certain number of years on a farm before gaining that freedom or that they need to go through like this weird system that is kind of set up against them in order to gain that freedom or maybe they aren't really thinking past the free part and how the jobs that are available to them are still basically slavery without having that title. So like there's a lot of nuance to the situation that I never really thought of and I feel like any book that I've read that has been set in this time has characters that are either all for slavery or completely against it and like perfect characters, basically white saviors. And so it's interesting to see characters that fall somewhere in the middle of that. Good morning. I was trying to figure out how I could, basically I'm working on my thumbnail for my video today and I w wanted to do a whole where you could see what I was working on and also see me, but it's just not happening. So so just know that that, that is what I am working on. But I did want to update because I have read a little bit more of Booth last night and this morning. So at this point I've made it through book three three of the book. So it's split into, I think, six books. I'm not totally positive. So basically we have like each section starting with that, but there are chapters like within that. And I would say book three is kind of all focused on the younger of the Booth children growing up and starting to have like their own ideas and everything because there's a big separation between like the oldest Booth and the youngest. And there's like a, quite a big gap in between. I can't fully remember, but something has happened and the children weren't, didn't make it very long. The children that are like in the middle of the family tree. So now the youngest children, which includes John, John Wilkes Booth and uh, Asia, who I'm was quickly starting to really like just reading about and hearing about. They are growing up and starting their own jobs, getting their own like ideas about the world and everything, not just subscribing to exactly like what their dad's point of view about the world was and I think that that's like an interesting thing to see but it is also kind of sad to see like the way that it's going specifically for John obviously I mean we all know what he becomes <laughs> but it's just interesting to see like the mindset of it and like to hear the arguments that are being used and they sound so very much like arguments that are used today and being like oh well if we free some slaves we have to free all slaves and it's like yeah exactly <laughs> like what are you talking about and then like people thinking that like oh yeah all men were created equal however it's some men's right to own other men and it's unfair if they don't have that right to do so and it's like, well, that doesn't sound like everybody's created equal then. Like, you know, you've got to pick one of those beliefs because both of them cannot be true. And then there's like this big idea, which I have seen in other books, that like if a slave escapes the farm and then there's like this idea of like, well, that owner treated them so well and like they had it so good on his farm. They don't realize how good they have it and all this stuff. Like, or basically being like, these people don't have the burden of freedom basically that like having a free life is really what's hard and like making all these decisions and like life is better for them like there's nothing better for for them than to be slaves because they've got like all their decisions made for them and all they have to do is work and then they can just like live their lives and it's like mm, that doesn't that's not <laughs> and like if it's that good if it's that good to be a slave like why don't you just do it that doesn't make any sense in the world to me so yeah it's just interesting to like see those thoughts and <laughs> things that sound so outrageous but honestly like you can kind of see that same logic being applied to arguments that are happening politically today i still like overall in the book i'm not quite sure how i feel about it i think that maybe it just jumps around like too quickly i feel like i'm speed running the lives of the booths and i feel like this happens a lot in historical fiction because it like wants to give you the whole backstory of a life and it wants to show you like this person growing through this point in history and everything and i appreciate that but i it means that you don't get as many like 
solid scenes where you're just like living in the moment and learning about the character that way. And I think that this book is lacking in that. I think that it's calmed down in doing that a bit now, now that they're a little bit older. Whereas at the beginning of the book, it definitely suffered from that more. But yeah, I think that it's done the best with Asia, who is the second youngest Booth, I think. But she's very close to John. And it's very interesting to see through her eyes, like his change as he becomes more politically involved and has more opinions in those areas and her being like, well, that's not kind of like how we were raised and everything. So it's it's interesting to see. Last night I also finished Booth and my opinions on it have like shifted a lot. So I was kind of talking about how I wasn't really getting on with the book because it felt like it was like jumping around a lot and I never felt like it really stuck with one character enough, that kind of a thing. But I do think that, I, I think that I oftentimes feel like this in these types of stories that follow several people over a pretty long period of time where like it does kind of feel like it pays off more in the end it's just a lot harder reading at the beginning and I think sometimes like it's done in a way that it doesn't make it so hard at the beginning I'm thinking like uh, Pachinko is one of my favorite books that kind of spans that long period of time and it's a bunch of different characters but it doesn't feel you don't get that same feeling through the beginning and then it still has that payoff at the end so this one was more i think about the payoff than about the, the journey getting there or maybe it was just like how much more i was invested with them as adults or more interested in them as adults than i was when they were all like basically children like i didn't really care that much about like their time at school like it was vaguely interesting and it did play a part in who they were later on and like was even referenced back to which i think is good but still like those parts of the story i wasn't overly excited to read about but i think about once we got to like the halfway point so like the last time that I did an update and once they really started to develop opinions of their own and get to choose their pathway for their life more, then it started getting a lot more interesting because you see like a grown family of siblings just like trying to understand each other and trying to be there for each other even though they don't always agree with each other. It was really surprising seeing like the difference of opinion and I don't know like how true the things in the story were. I read The Afterword by Karen Joy Fowler and it sounds like she did really try where she could to be truthful but a lot of things were really hard to confirm because there's a lot of like mythology surrounding this family just because a member in it did something so terrible but at least in this story basically the whole family is on the side of the union and they for the most part really like Abraham Lincoln or at least see him as more positive than negative and then there's John who just like gets progressively and progressively more leaning the other way more on the side of the south more on the side of the confederates it's so weird to hear him being so convinced that he's correct like that he's doing the right thing by not just white people but black people as well like he really believes that like the way things are and the way that the country's been set up what's best for both of them it's crazy to hear somebody try to like justify that and not even just one person but like other people as well like he wasn't alone in this thought like this was a prevailing thing like obviously there was a large group of people that really truly believed this and like had their own reasons and some of them had different reasons than other people and it's just it's really weird to think about but it just like kind of shows how somebody could be raised in a way that you know obviously we saw all the members of the family get raised in this story and just john winds up this way and so it's just it's interesting to see like how wrong things can go and how hard it is for the others to really like grapple with it and understand that this has actually happened and then like marry up that image of John with the image that they have of him, that they grew up with him and knowing that like he had these other thoughts and he had these other opinions politically but that also they thought that he would never do something like this and then how it impacts their lives going forward uh, which it does greatly and reading the afterword by 
Fowler, she talks about, you know, why she wanted to re write this book in the first place. And it was after uh, one of the mass shootings here in the States. And she was talking about basically thinking about the family and what it's like for the family who grew up with this person or who raised this person. And that ends up like doing this terrible, terrible thing and then needing to come to terms with that in their own way. And I think that this book did a really great job of doing that while also centering on a on a person in history that was like huge, but not centering on him, which she talks about that as well, how she wanted to write a book about this family, but she didn't want to make it about John Wilkes Booth. So all of the sections are all taken from perspectives of siblings with the exception of John. And like the interactions between like Asia and Edwin and like, you know, her opinions on who he should marry and like all that, you know, you, you get it all. It's not just like these characters and their perspectives of John. A lot of it doesn't have him in it. And so you get this idea of a family and then you see where it goes. And it's, it's really cool. It's a, it's a really good read. And I'm surprised by how much I ended up liking it at the end and how connected to it I felt. And also how much I felt like it represented what we're dealing with in the current day. Okay, so my battery is all charged up and now I can tell you uh, what I thought of the colony so far. Honestly, at this point, I could have just like finished reading it and then told you what, and for the sake of being able to update throughout. So I listened to like three quarters of the colony and I'm really loving it so far. Basically, it's about this island that used to just like completely speak Irish, but now they've been speaking more and more English and there's a lot of conversation around that but there's like two main characters that uh, one of whom is from England and then the other one is uh, from France. So the Englishman wants to, he's like a painter, so he wants to go to this island to paint and be like in this more rustic atmosphere. He's like, oh, I wanna paint the cliffs. And they're like, you don't have cliffs in England? He's like, well, not like this. And then the other guy, the French dude, has been coming to this island for a while, but he's writing a paper for his degree, I think, on the disappearance of the Irish language. And so a large part of it's focused on this island because there is somebody still living that only speaks Irish, doesn't speak any English. And then as you go through the generations, they start more and more speaking English. The youngest generation that we really get to see, James, he speaks English. Uh, and he does have an Irish name, Seamus, but the, the French guy like insists on calling him Seamus instead of James, even though James wants to be called James. Like, so there's that, but there's just like a lot of talk between, or not even talk, cause it's not like telling us as the reader, but you just get a feel for it. I really should have put my camera higher up. <laughs> but you really just get a feel for it that like, you know, there is something sad about James like losing his culture and his history and not being interested in it at all. But at the same time, like he should be able to make his own decisions about like what he wants to be called and like what he wants to do. So like there's a, it's like this balancing act between like agreeing that you do want this culture to remain alive, but also that people should be able to make their own decisions and it's not really up to like the French guy and the English guy that came to this island, like what their opinions about it are because it's not their lives. But a lot of the story, I mean, it's totally about like the their two experiences on this island and you get to see like conversations between them and arguments between them about what they think about the Irish culture on this island, which is hilarious because it's like, there's people right there that you could just talk to about it. Like it's weird that these like two foreigners are like the ones that are arguing about this in front of the people who like, it's actually their culture, it's actually their history. But yeah, overall, I think just like fantastic commentary on that. The atmosphere is so good. The only complaint I would say that I have is that it does spend like a lot of time on the paintings that the English guy is writing. His name's Lloyd. I don't know why I'm not calling them by their names. It's JP and Lloyd. So Lloyd is the painter and the one from England. And so there's like a lot about him painting. I like the self-portrait. It'll say like self-portrait of a man painting or something, or like self-portrait of a man uh, seasick, something along those lines. And I really like those, but it's just like when he's actively painting that like, I just don't care to hear as much about 
as we do. <laughs> Besides those, I would say really, really great book. I think it just like gets a little bit too monotonous in those areas. Okay, welcome back. Let's chat about these two books. So starting with Booth, because I started with that in the video, I still have the same feelings as I did in the video. I did want to add, however, that I think that this is going to be more powerful for US readers or people that are from the US or more familiar with US history. However, it is really at its core about a family whose son has been like radicalized to the point where he kills somebody else and thinks that he is right in doing that, that he's doing it for a greater cause. And I think that that is something that's relevant all over. And reading about the family and that how that affects them, I think is relevant no matter where you are. So yeah, I just wanted to put in that caveat. And also I wanted to talk about whether or not the Booker Frog recommends it, since obviously the book was just eligible at the time. Also hilarious that I was like, I don't think that this will make it to the long list. But would the Booker Frog and I give this a ribbit? And I am going to say yes, but I would like to, again, refer back to the caveat that I think that US readers are gonna connect with this book more than others will. Now, The Colony. Most of my thoughts on that are very similar to what I said while hunched over in my kitchen for some reason. I think that the only thing that I can add to that is just that the ending, I feel like it didn't really surprise me. It was kind of like a, oh, of course, but about the characters, not about the book as a whole. I would say that it reminds me greatly of The Promise by Damon Galgett. However, I think that The Promise did do it better, if I'm being honest. So I still think The Colony is a great book. I, I think that it does suffer from a bit too much of explaining the painting and, and that kind of thing. But overall, I think that it is still a good read and The Booker Frog and I would indeed recommend it. I should say, uh, if you're new to following me through a Booker season, the Booker frog is <laughs> the frog that either does or does not rib it for a book, which means that he either does or does not recommend it. There is also the ever elusive double ribbit, which typically one book per prize gets, not necessarily the winner, although the winner has gotten it in the past. What was that? International Booker 2021 at Night of Blood is Black both got the double ribbon and won. It was a great year and I had a great time. So anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. It is sad that I won't see you for quite some time for a Booker book review on this channel, but I will still be talking about them on my Instagram and I will still be recording them. It's just that they won't yet be here, but be patient with me. Enjoy my other fun videos that I've got going up during this time. And of course, I'll try to be in Kieran's Discord as much as I can to talk about the books I'm reading while I'm reading them. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this video. So thanks for watching. I upload a new video every Wednesday, so be sure to subscribe and I will see you then. Bye.